My name is Vinny Lynch and I'm a human geneticist at the University of Chicago and I'm here at the Field Museum to talk about woolly mammoths. Woolly mammoths are actually a really great model to try to understand how evolution works at the molecular level because their closest living relatives are Asian elephants. And Asian elephants and woolly mammoths look really different from each other. And we call these things suites of adaptations that allowed them to foster a, a life in the cold, unlike Asian elephants, which live somewhere where it's really hot. To study the genetics of woolly mammoths, the first thing you have to do is get DNA. And we do that by going to the places in the high Arctic where there are woolly mammoth carcasses frozen in permafrost and extracting DNA. And then we can use some new techniques to sequence these ancient genomes. Then from there, we can compare the ancient woolly mammoth genomes to the genomes of living elephants to try to identify all the genetic changes that are unique to woolly mammoths. We found that there were a lot of woolly mammoth changes in genes that are important for fat and hair and most importantly for temperature sensation, for sensing how cold or warm their environment was. And we also found changes that we think are responsible for, for having long reddish hair and small ears and short tails and being adapted to the, the weird circadian rhythms that have to happen in the Arctic. So the thing about genome comparisons is that you don't actually get to function. You can make analogy to function based on what's already known, but if you want to understand what's happening at the genetic level, at the molecular level, you have to do things like resurrect the ancient proteins. So what we did was resurrect one of the woolly mammoth warm temperature sensors, and then we compared them in the lab to see how they responded to temperature. And we found that the woolly mammoth protein actually was much less active than the other Asian elephants' proteins which suggests that they were less responsive to cold temperatures, which kind of makes sense given that they live somewhere that it was really cold. We found thousands of genes with mammoth substitutions, and we only functionally characterized one. So the next steps are to start functionally characterizing all those thousands of genes. And this starts to inform us about what kind of genetic changes are responsible for diversity. The work we have done is a step toward resurrecting the woolly mammoth, because in order to do that, the first thing you need is a genome. So this is the first step. Uh, whether you should take the next steps is up for debate. Whether you actually should resurrect a woolly mammoth, even though it's becoming technically possible to do so, is uh, an ethical question. It's not a biological question.